Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord. Oh, it's good to be back in the Lord's house again this morning. Amen. Amen. It's good to have you with us today. Just an announcement before we get started so we don't forget. Um, dinner will be next Sunday. So we have this girl after service and we get the meeting together to figure out whether we're going to do a good that or something. So next Sunday after service we'll be having our dinner for the month. All right, let's all stand and we'll ask the Lord to bless our service today. Anyone have a uh, smoking or not smoking prayer? Remember our family, um, our oldest son Aaron is leaving for Saudi Arabia next uh, next Saturday at 1 o'clock. And he'll be gone for probably about six months. So pray for him and pray for us.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, for all you do for us, Lord God, use me now. Use this broken person here today, Lord God, and help me teach the word today. Lord God, give us hearts and minds ready to receive it, Lord. We need you, and we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms 31, verse number 9. says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eyes consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my, and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel against me, they revised to take away my life. You may be seated. That's powerful right there. How many of you ever felt that way? No matter where you turned or whatever you did, nothing was going to work out for you. To be honest with you, if you are not broken, God can't use you. When you think that you're whole and you're perfect and you don't need anything, the Bible tells you that you are miserable and naked. God wants you to recognize that you need help. 
How many of you in this, in this room today can live or work or function without God being on your side? I recognize I need the Lord because I am a broken vessel. And there's only one thing that can fix me. And that is God. We're broken. There's things in our life that we really need to get fixed. There's, and here he says, I'm, no matter what I did, it failed. I failed as a parent. I failed as a, an, an employee. I failed as a father. I failed, I, I, he said, I just, I, whatever I did, I failed. My life was spent with grief. My years with sighing and my strength faileth because of my sickness. I know it's not good. I don't know how I'm going to go on. There's no help for me. There's no hope for me. And there's sometimes you feel that way. That there's no help, no hope. You're fear. You're in full of fear, and you you're powerless. I I can't. I'm I'm stuck in this rut. How do I get out of it? God likes to use broken things. Turn to Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. Verse 1 says, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out to fit him two men to spy secretly, saying, Go through the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot pass named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. For they come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came two men to me, but I wist not whence they are. This woman, Rahab, which was a harlot. In other words, the harlot means that she was a prostitute. And if you're selling your body to make money, you don't get more broken than that. Not only was she a harlot, she also was a pagan. She worshipped Baal. She was broken. She was serving a false god, praying to a god to help her get out of her brokenness. And that god couldn't hear. That god couldn't see. That god couldn't do. That god couldn't do anything for her. So she had no help and no hope. She was completely broken until she met the messenger of Joshua. The messengers of Joshua were like the messengers of the Lord, and the Lord came into the one who was in harlot. And if you look in the book of Matthew, out of the lineage of Rahab came who? Christ. That's powerful. You may think that you're too broken for God to use. But God likes to use broken vessels. Amen? Isn't that powerful? The Lord likes to use broken things. And look at what happened in Joshua chapter 6. When they were given a decree to go ahead and march around Jericho and tear down the walls and to destroy everything inside those walls. Bring nothing out. Destroy it all. Verse 17. Joshua 6, 17. The city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. The Lord used this broken her only he says to the Lord not her and, and only Rahab the harlot shall live and she and all that are within her house because she hid the messenger that was sent God used this broken vessel and God saved this broken vessel because she decided she was going to follow the Lord the Lord helps us in our brokenness. Amen? Look at Psalms 34. Verse number 18. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. 
how's your heart doing? How many times has your how many times have your kids taken you out? Or your family taken you out? Or your wife or your girlfriend or someone, one of your friends? Those are the people that can hurt you the most, the people that you love, the people that say that they love you. When David was uh, king of Israel, he, he did something that God was not pleased with, and, and one of his chiefest counselors counseled to kill him. Ahithophel was his name. And then in Psalm 6, he talks about it. It was you, my own familiar friend, that had counseled against me. And he was hurt. He was broken. I can't believe it. And then his son Absalom did the rebellion against him and took all his wives and took his wives to the roof of the castle castle and had sex with all of David's wives, what, just to embarrass him. He was completely broken. And David's the one who writes this, that the Lord is close to those who are of a broken heart. He says, if you've never been broken, you really don't that we all got problems and we all got issues in our lives that need to be fixed. You can, I don't care how close you might think you be to God, there is still something in your life that you need to fix, that you have to work on. That's why we grow in grace and we do it day by day. We go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Paul didn't say I was finished until he was ready to die. Are you ready to die? He wants, he wants to die today. Anybody? As long as you want to keep on living, then you need to keep on working. If you want to keep on living, then you need to keep on pressing into the kingdom. Understand that you are a broken vessel, and the Lord's the one who can fix you. Amen? Look at Revelation chapter 3. I quoted this earlier. Verse 17, it says, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. God wants you to recognize that you are broken, and that you need to be fixed. This adulterous and sinful generation that Brother Russell was talking about earlier today, there could be some of you sitting in here today. Adultery is not just fooling around on your wife. It's fooling around on God. Spiritual adultery. Are we following the Lord? Are we living, doing something in our life that when we put something before we do it before the Lord? It's easy. Psalms 32. What God wants you to do is God wants you to be real, not just with him, but with yourself. A lot of people say, I'm okay, I'm okay, when you know that you're not. It's a big lie. I'm not okay. I need help, Lord. Or Matthew West sings a song that I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. And, and we know you're not fine. There's problems. I got, Lord, I need help. Psalm 32, verse 5, it says, I acknowledge. I recognize that I'm broken. I acknowledge my sin of the day and my iniquity have I not. And what happens when we hide our sin? The Bible says you're not going to prosper. He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses, recognizes I need help, and forsakes them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. So he says, I acknowledge my sin of thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess. I need help, Lord. We talked about Paul in our, son, in our prayer lesson this week, and Paul says, Lord, I have this, this thorn in my flesh. But Lord, you sent the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lord, would you remove this thing from me? Lord, I need help. I'm broke. I know what I need you. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. His grace is enough for you too. No matter, he was, his grace was enough for the harlot. 
His grace is enough for you today. If you're broken, he can fix you, praise the Lord. But you have to acknowledge, Lord, I need help. He said, a drug addict can get through a door safely. He said, an alcoholic can get into AA. He has to recognize, you know what? No, my name is this, and I'm an alcoholic. The Pharisee and the publican went down to pray. The Pharisee beat on his chest, look at me, how great and how powerful. I pay tithes, do all this good stuff. And the publican, he wouldn't have much of leaving, just lift his eyes up to heaven and said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. What did he say? Lord, I'm the one standing in the need of help. If you're standing here and think that you're all perfect and there's nothing wrong with you, then you're mistaken. God says, if you walk around and say, I don't have no sin, you are a liar and the truth of God is not in you. We need Jesus. The preacher needs Jesus. You need Jesus. We all need more Jesus today because we're broken. And he's the one who fixes us, praise the Lord. Lord, help us today. We are living in this evil and adulterous generation. Lord, save us from this awful place. Jesus prayed to the God, all those that are with me, save them. I don't want you to take them out of the world, but protect them from the evil. When you see one of your friends get shot, someplace you frequent, like Russell was talking about this morning, said, man, that evil's really hitting close to home. When we have one of our relatives die from a drug overdose, it's hitting really close to home. There's evil. Years have gone for almost two years. Not a single one of them showed up to church. No one. They don't want help. But as soon as that that feeling wears off, right back to the pig pen they go. Right back to eating their vomit. Confess my transgressions to the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Amen. Lord, send me a refuge. What does verse 7 say? Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Amen. Lord, you are my refuge. Lord, you are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. Lord God, you are the one who fixes me. Proverbs 15. Verse 13. Our merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. You're happy in here, it shows here. Right? When you're happy in here, it shows here. That's what that's for. He said, But thy sorrow of the heart is pure in front of God. And if you're broken in here, sometimes you will try to hide it. With a fake smile. But you know what a real smile is. You know when you're really happy. People can see it. Why? Because your eyes are the windows to your soul. And when I was 15 years old, I was a little urchin. I was mischievous and had a, a prophetess, Sister Adam, and looked at my eyes and said, Boy, there's trouble in your eye. And that thing scared me to death. 15 years old, this old lady telling me I have trouble in my eye. But it is that Brother Tim's mom seen me. I ran up to his brother and I seen your eye loved on me. And he 
shook my hand, he looked into my eyes, he says, I know you're telling me the truth because I see it in your eyes. And I can see in your eyes today that some of you are broken. You're dealing with trouble, you're dealing with heartache, you're dealing with something you don't have no idea how to fix. You're broken. And you need the Lord to fix you. But it starts by you getting out of that chair and saying, Lord, I need your help. Because I'm going to look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Lord, I can't do this on my own. Lord, I've tried and Lord, I've failed. I need your help today, Lord. It starts with us recognize that we are broken. And then the Lord can use us because God uses broken things. Hold up there. Turn to Matthew 14. Matthew 14, verse 16. And it came to pass, I'm sorry. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send them over the ways that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. I planted this, I call that a widow. Right. And Jesus said of them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said of him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them hither to me. They were whole. They had whole fishes and they had whole loaves. And they thought they were better served if they were whole. Then what happened? And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes and Looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And he took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. He took those things which were whole and recognized that, you know what, I can't use this unless it's what? If it's 5,000 men, if each one of them had a wife, that's 10,000. If each of them had two children, you're looking at 20,000 people there. That's a lot of men. You know, God's the one who performs what is right for us. Turn back to Psalm 41. Matthew chapter 21, verse 44. And said, Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be what? The word shall means it's voluntary. Voluntary. If you voluntarily fall. In other words, if you voluntarily commit. Commit yourselves unto God. Humble yourself before the Lord. But on whomsoever it shall fall, this is the side that we are we're completely whole. We, we don't need to be broken. We don't. That we're good enough just like we are. Guess what? Then God can't use us. An example of that was when I was in the military. I'm one of the few that didn't know how to shoot a gun. I didn't know how to do anything. 
but there's some bread that honey they hold their dad taught them how to talk their granddaddy taught them how to talk and what they said you what i'm going to have to do is a lot of you think you know how to cheat but i'm going to have to break you from your bad habits you don't use kentucky green beans we actually use them as spice so the first two weeks they had to break us from all of our bad habits so what we can become the soldier they wanted us to be they had to break us from being lazy from sleeping in how many how many children today when they sleep in they're one or two o'clock in the afternoon got to be broken of that. If you're going to become an adult, you're sleeping your life away. Life is too short for that. You're missing life. But they broke us. And there were some that refused to be broken. And guess what happened to them? They got kicked out. If you look at the trees when the wind blows, that tree that is able to sway back and forth, when the storm's gone, it stands right back upright. But that tree that refuses to bend, it's broken. It's broken off. You have to be able to let the Lord, when he blows on you, to be able to bend. Lord, yeah, I need to go this way. And then he's going to stand you upright. If we get to the point, I'm so rigid, I'm so, I know everything, you can't teach me anything, you're going to fall upon this rock, or this rock's going to fall upon you, it's going to grind you to nothing. Because God likes to use circumstances. It's easier than you expect. Now we're going to pray for you. Twenty eighteen says the exact same thing. Mark chapter two. Verse four. And, and again, I'll start with verse one. And again he went into Capernaum. After some, after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together, and so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as the door about, the, no, so much as about the door. And he speaks a word unto them. Lord, Jesus speaking here again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He is speaking in the past tense. He is speaking who he was in the past through the first four books of the Bible. He's preaching the word to them. And they came and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they looked, could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they laid down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And Jesus saw their faith and said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And what happened? The guy that was sick of the palsy rose up and walked. Why? Because they broke the roof. And Jesus saw that their faith, he used something that was broken to make someone who was broken whole. The Lord sees us sometimes. also sees your failure. And the Lord wants to speak to you today. Amen? First Corinthians chapter 11. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the new testament, and in my blood, this they do. 
this do you as oft as you drink it? When? November 7th. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. What happened? Jesus was hung on the cross, taking the bread. As he broke the bread before, he said, thy body. He's now saying, this bread is my body. For Jesus is the bread of life. This is my body, which is broken for you. God is going to use my broken body to fix you that are broken to you as well. He used Jesus Christ's broken body to make us whole. Amen? Oh, I thought I would get more amens out of that. I said he used his broken body to make us whole. Praise the Lord. God likes using broken things. and 26 and about to wrap this up here. As we see Jesus there, Paul was quoting. As we see Jesus, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, saying, Break it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave them thanks and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. His broken body and his blood was used to save us from our sin. Amen. Jesus proved. Jesus set the truth. Fourteen it says, "For He is our peace." Somebody say, "Amen." Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in the, His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, as or contained in ordinances, for to make in Himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them which were nigh. For through him we have both access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen. What Christ's broken body to us gave us access to God. Praise the Lord. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple unto the Lord, to, in the Lord. In whom, in whom you are also built together for the habitation of God through the Spirit, that through his body we are no longer strangers, we are no longer foreigners, we're no longer that man that David was talking about in Psalm 78. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says, I'm, as, as 
forgotten and I'm broken. I'm like a broken vessel. But he said what? I'm blessed be the Lord. Because he has chosen to give marvelous things. We are saved by the goodness of God. Even in our brokenness. Even in our For whoso shall, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered, and in, ver- in Romans it says shall be saved. Amen. In closing, let's go to Psalms fifty-seven. Amen. You're good. Praise the Lord. Psalms fifty-seven, verses two. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things well. What does that mean? He fulfills his purpose for me. Through my brokenness, he uses me to perform what he wants done in my life. And when I recognize that, that God uses broken people. Amen? Then verse number seven, he says, my heart is what? My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I was broken. I felt like this broken piece of pottery, Lord. But you fixed me, praise the Lord. I will sing and give praise. Can you give the Lord praise this morning? Amen. Psalms 108, verse 1. O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. What happens when you say something twice? You try to reiterate it. You try to emphasize a point. And sometimes you're trying to convince yourself. That's why we have to, when we tell us to forgive somebody, we have to do it 70 times, 70 times a day. Sometimes you just have to say it over and over again until it happens. He wants you to understand that he's the one who can fix your heart. So he writes it again. Oh, my heart is fixed, oh God. God, you have fixed my heart. When I felt like this broken vessel, Lord, you fixed me, praise the Lord. So I, I will sing and give praise. Let the Lord fix you. Can you just give the Lord praise today? Thank you, Lord, for touching my heart. For using me in my brokenness, Lord. For delivering me from myself, praise the Lord. Use it, get me away from all that and bring me into your, bringing me out of that darkness and put me into your marvelous light. Lord, thank you for delivering me today. Ain't God good? One more place, Psalms 112. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Don't you get bad news? You don't have to worry about it. His heart is fixed. Now, fixed in this context has two meanings. First, it's repaired. It also means that I'm not going anywhere. I'm in a fixed position. I am stable. I am settled. I am rooted and grounded in God's truth. So with my heart, I'm not going to be afraid. When I once was that broken vessel, every little thing made me afraid. Every little thing got me scared. Everything was my fault. Everything was wrong. But now that I trust in the Lord and God fixed me, he says that when evil tidings come, I'm not going to be afraid and I'm not going to be moved because my heart is fixed. Praise the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. His heart is established, he shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his son. 
God uses broken people. And if you are hurt and lost this morning and you need to be repaired, there's something also worth finding broken. For he is a mender of all fences, he can fix anything that is broken. Amen? Let's all stand and say.